This video is brought to you by Warby Parker. Order five pairs of glasses and try them on for five days with no obligation to buy. Head to warbyparker.com forward slash brain food to try your free home try on kit today. More on them in a bit. Ever wonder how the 2020 and 66 vision scales work? We'll wonder no more. With approximately half of all adults requiring some form of corrective eyewear to compensate for visual impairment of various forms, chances are you've had your eyesight graded on the 2020 or 66 scales before. The vision scale is so prevalent that in the US there's even a TV news show named after it, somewhat ironical when you learn what 2020 actually implies in a bit. So what exactly are eye doctors measuring here? What's the difference between the 66 scale and the 2020? And who came up with the whole thing in the first place? As to that latter question, enter 19th century Dutch doctor Herman Herman Snellen, who no doubt has long since been reduced to dust, but thanks to his contributions to humanity has lived on as more than just worm and microbe poop. Before Snellen, others had come up with a variety of ways to attempt to measure a person's vision, such as one Benito Daca de Valdez, who in the early 17th century was measuring people's vision based on their ability to see small objects at various distances, things like mustard seeds and even text. Others improved on this using text of various size and using different distances and the like, but there was no standard method that could be easily and accurately reproduced across the globe until 1862 when Dr. Snellen published his test types for the determination of acuteness of vision, which included such a standardization method. The famous chart stereotypically topped with a big letter E, consisting of 11 rows of capital letters that get progressively smaller in very specific ways as you go down on the chart. The major advancement for this chart and method over the previous ones included, among other things, Snellen's custom character set designed to be optimal for measuring visual acuity and calibrating said characters. He called them optotypes based on external arc, so they could be easily reproduced by anyone across the world. Dr. Snellen's chart was an instant bestseller, including within a year being picked up by the British Army, who wanted a standardized way to measure all soldiers' visual acuity with reference to one another. Incidentally, it was also Dr. Snellen who came up with the tumbling e-chart that is likewise still pretty popular even to this day. This one was developed to get around, among other issues, with the original chart, the fact that some people, such as miniature humans often don't know the Latin alphabet. This all brings us around to the whole 2020 and 66 thing and what exactly that means. In an oversimplified nutshell, this just means that standing 20 feet or 6 meters, 19.69 feet, away from something, you can see what a so-called normal sighted person can see standing 20 feet or 6 meters away from the same thing. Or more accurately, you have the same visual acuity, ability to see the details of something you're looking at. Or even more accurately than that, measuring your ability to distinguish between two contours that are separated by one arc minute, approximately 1.75 millimeters, at 20 feet or 6 meters. And note here, going back to the irony of naming a new show 2020, First, it turns out what's actually average is not exactly what Snelling came up with here. He explicitly was going for, to quote him, easily recognizable by normal eyes, with emphasis on easily, and thus around 6'5", 2015, to 6'4", 2012 would more accurately be the real normal, at least until we get particularly close at being worm food ourselves. As you might have guessed from all this, 2020 or 6'6 does not mean you have perfect vision to see things perfectly clearly, as many people say. It's simply means you perform in the ballpark of what Dr. Snelling considered normal visual acuity, but actually is kind of below average. Which I guess is sort of fitting when talking accuracy in the news. Further, it should be explicitly noted that you don't necessarily have to literally be standing 20 feet or 6 meters away from the chart. The tests by their very nature can be scaled or sometimes mirrors are used and all that jazz. On top of that, this test, while somewhat practical for judging your vision for certain activities, is decidedly lacking in many ways at actually actually giving a clear picture of your overall vision and any issues you may or may not have. This is, of course, why eye doctors have a number of other tests they do. All right, so that's 2020 or 66. What does it mean when you move up and down the chart and the numbers change? As an example with the Snelling chart, the doctor will ask you to read out the smallest line of letters that you can see from the set distance away. Most people can read the fourth line up from the bottom without any trouble. So if you can do this, again, your vision is considered at least 2020 or 66. Congratulations. Congratulations, you're at least below average as your parents always knew deep down, Steve. On the extreme bad vision end, if you can only see the big E clearly,
Italy or whatever letter on top and none of the other lines of text, you're considered to have 2200 vision, 660. That means you see at 20 feet, 6 meters, what the average person can see at 200 feet, 60 meters away. So to reiterate, if you take someone with 2020 vision and put them 200 feet away from the chart, they would still be able to see the big E clearly. 2200 visual acuity, however, and worse, is considered legally blind in many places such as the US. Alternatively, if you can read the tiny bottom line of text on the chart at 20 feet or 6 meters away, you have 25 visual acuity or 62, which means you can see at 20 feet that which the hypothetical normal, but actually a little below average person can only see at 5 feet away. Most humans actually don't have the ability to have much better than 2010 vision, with 25 vision usually reserved for animals like birds of prey. But as noted, plenty of humans dip into the 2015 or sometimes the 2010 6.3 range. Speaking of things that are below average, perhaps your vision. If so, why not go check out today's sponsor, Warby Parker. For those not familiar, Warby Parker is a company offering prescription glasses, contacts, and sunglasses at a fraction of the price of most outlets, and which you can get sent right to your door via one of their completely free home try-on kits. These kits come with no obligation to buy, a prepaid return label right in the box, and of course, five pairs of glasses of your choice, which you can then have five days to check out before needing to send them back. Alternatively, if you're a contact lens kind of person, they have those two with their breathable scout lenses, which are made from a super moist material that resists drying for lasting hydration and comfort. The trial pack includes six days worth of contacts for only $5, and then you get $5 off your next Warby Parker order. But back to the glasses, they start at just $95, including prescription lenses, which have anti-glare and anti-scratch coatings. The sunglasses also start at $95, including polarized lenses, scratch resistance, and 100% UV protection. They also are available with prescription lenses starting at $175. To get started, head over to warbyparker.com forward slash brain food to order your free home try-on kit today. Now let's get into those bonus facts. Speaking of vision, a common trope the world over is that humans have only five senses. Yeah, that's not a thing in reality. That's like the earth, wind, fire, water way of looking at senses. Much more on this in an upcoming video, but for now, just know that's a bunch of crap. Moving on from there, a common trope is that sitting too close to the TV or holding a screen too close to your face will damage your vision. Yeah, that's not a thing either. So why do parents the world over still say this to their kids? In truth, probably mostly so kids will not block the boob tube with their gigantic heads. Move your head! Look at the size of that boy's head. But also funnily enough, there was actually a very brief period of time where sitting too close to the TV could not only damage your eyes, but you in general, assuming you owned a General Electric TV in the 1960s. More specifically, in 1967, General Electric informed the public that many of their color televisions were admitting excessive x-rays due to a, to quote them, factory error. GE fixed this problem by putting a leaded glass shield around the tubes. Health officials at the time estimated the amount of ionizing radiation being given off by these defective TVs was about 10 to 100,000 times higher than the rate considered acceptable. They recommended if you own one of these TVs not to sit too close, as long as you were a few feet away and didn't watch TV for more than an hour at a time or so at this close range, you were probably fine. The 1960s, everybody. How would you like to take a break from that fine lead-based paint? General Electric, of course, recalled all these TVs and fixed the problem, so the issue went away. Yet another crap parents say thing is the idea that reading in dim lighting will damage your eyesight. The truth is, it would appear the only damage reading in dimly light setting will do in comparison to reading in an ample lighted setting is to cause extra eye strain, which will go away simply by resting your eyes. This particular one even made it on a list of seven medical myths that doctors are most likely to believe, a list put together by the British Medical Journal. For the other six medical myths on their list, these include needing to drink eight glasses of water per day, that you only use 10% of your brain, that hair and fingernails continue to grow after death, that shaving affects hair thickness and growth rates, that eating turkey makes you drowsy, and that cell phones used in a normal way will cause problems with hospital equipment. That one was popularized by a 1993 study that has since been thoroughly debunked. Going back to eyesight, in addition to doctors, 56.3% of teachers surveyed by Biomed Central say that in order to maintain good eye health, people should avoid reading in dim light, despite the fact that to date no scientific study has been able to conclusively show that reading in dim light hurts your eyesight long term more than 
reading and adequately lit areas. Now there is a slight caveat here. It should be noted that people who read a lot or otherwise focus on things close up for long periods of time, such as people who work on computers all day or do a lot of sewing or the like, do have a higher tendency to develop myopia, nearsightedness, but dim lighting doesn't appear to make this tendency measurably worse, simply that excessive reading seems to contribute to eventually developing nearsightedness. The leading theory as to why is that the near constant straining of muscles focusing the eye, stretching the eyeball a bit, over the years gradually causes a permanent lengthening of the eyeball, thus the person developing myopia as they age. Now reading in dim light does seem to increase eye strain, so some hypothesize that this exacerbates the problem. But the consensus among optometrists and the data to date is that if this is what is happening, the difference isn't big enough that it produces a noticeable acceleration of the development of myopia over reading in a well-lit area. However, whether reading in low light or ample light for lengthy time periods, the resulting eye strain is not serious and one simply needs to rest the eyes on occasion. You can do so by periodically taking a break from focusing on something close up and instead look at something far away. So to sum up these bonus facts, don't listen to anything your parents say. Hey, they're full of crap. QED. So hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, feel free to subscribe for more if you feel so inclined. And either way, if you need glasses, please go check out our sponsor, Warby Parker. Thank you, and thank you for watching.